Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Today we'll start a new section on page number 735. Please turn to it. It's page 735. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Starting with number one. If at the end, of, if at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at the first problem. It's already on the blackboard. It says. It says what fraction of dogs get dry food and here we have cats and dogs and dry food and both what fraction of them what fraction of the dogs get dry food well we have a total of 25 25 dogs out of which two of them get a dry food the answer simply is 2 out of 25 the answer is 2 out of 25 or if you like there we go and that happens to be answer choice B Let's look at next one. Let's take a look at number two. Number two says x squared minus three minus negative three x squared plus five. We are simply being asked to simplify it. That's all it is. So let's do that. So that's just x squared minus three. Open the parenthesis. This negative and negative is going to become positive, 3x squared, and this negative and this positive is going to become negative, 5. x squared and 3x squared is 4x squared, and a negative 3 and a negative 5 is going to give us negative 8, and that's all there is. And that is answer choice A. Number 3 says that, uh, let's, let's, not do it, let's not do it at the same time, let's just erase it. There's no reason why, you should have, why we should have blackboard all crowded. Number three. It says that one package requires one package requires three centimeter of tape. I take it for granted that the book is in front of you and you're reading the problem yourself. And if you are, you know exactly what I'm talking about. One package requires three centimeter, it says in the, in the problem. We have six meter of tape. We have six meter of tape. The question simply is, how many packages can we tape with six meter of tape, given the fact that one, each one of them requires three centimeter? Well, six meter of tape we know is equal to simply six hundred centimeter, because there are one hundred centimeters in one meter. Six hundred centimeter is same as two hundred times three centimeter. There we go. Since each packet requires three centimeter of tape we can seal 200 boxes. We can seal 200 boxes. And that's answer choice C. Number four. Number four on the same page. It says that some people were surveyed uh, and there were 200 people were selected at random from a group of people from a group of people who had happened to re to have read a book of of the people who had read a particular book, one particular book, or two hundred people were selected at random, and those two hundred people are told us that they like they like the book, whatever particular book it was. It says Marcus Research selected two hundred people at random from a group of people who indicated that they liked a certain book. So there was a group of people who had said that they liked this particular book, they, have, they had read it and they liked the book, and out of that group, 200 people were selected at random. 95% of these people, 95% of these 200 people, did not care 
for the movie. So of this group of people who had read a book, we selected and told us that they liked the book. Of that group, we selected 200 people at random and we showed those 200 people a movie, a movie based on that particular book. And after the movie was over, 95% of those 200 people said, no, we don't care for the movie. Movie, movie doesn't do a justice to the book. I don't like the movie. The question simply is, based on this information, what kind of inference can we draw? And we have several choices here. I'm not going to put down all of them on the blackboard because it will take too long. What inference can we draw? The answer is very straightforward. The inference we can draw is the answer that we can draw. Inference that we can draw is very simple. It, 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 the inference simply is that if you have read the book, if you have read the book, you will think you will think the movie. If you have read the book, you will think that the movie essentially sucks. Movie is no good. Movie does not do the justice to the book. Movie does not portray exactly what is going on in the book. That's all. And that is answer choice D. If you have read the book, you will think that the movie sucks. For those people who did not read the book and simply saw the movie, that's a different story. Let's do the next one. Number five. We are given this inequality and we are given three ordered pairs and our job is to figure out which one of these ordered pairs works for this inequality. That's what it is. Number five. It says which of the following ordered pair satisfies the inequality. So here we go. The first one is, the first order pair, order pair is 1, 1. 1, 1. If you put in 1, 1, 5 times 1 is one, 5, and 3 times, 3 times 1 is 3. And 5 minus 3 is 2, which is less than 4. It works. First, first ordered pair works. Let's look at second one. Second one tells us 2, 5. Second order pair is 2, 5. Let's find out here. 5 times 2 would be 10 minus y is 5. 3 times 5 would be 15. And we can see 10 minus 15. 10 minus 15 is negative 5 and that is indeed less than 4. That also works. Let's look at the third order pair. 3, 2. Let's see what we can do. 3, 2. 5 times 3 would be 15. Minus y coordinate is 2. 3 times 2 would be 6. And 15 minus 6 is equal to 9. And 9 does not, 9 is not smaller than 4. Third one does not work. The answer is 1 and 2 only. And that is answer choice C. That is answer choice C. Let's look at number six, shall we? Let's see what we have in number six. Number six, we are told that AX plus three squared equals 36. The question is how much is a equal to if x is equal to negative 3? If x is equal to negative 3. So let's put it in. See what we can do here. x is equal to negative 3. If x is equal to negative 3, this part becomes negative 3 a is negative 3 a plus 3 whole squared. 36. Let's take out 3 common. Let's take out 3 common. If we take out 3 common, but the 3 that we take out common has to be squared. So 3 squared and here we have negative a plus 1. And, and I hope that you're able to see that this quantity is exactly the same as that quantity. Uh, 
Uh, maybe I should do it a little bit differently. If you like, we can do it this way. If it, if it, if it makes it easier for you to see, let's take out three common and we get negative a plus one and this whole thing is being squared. You see, it's the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing. And three is squared, three is squared is equal to nine. And here we get negative a plus one, negative a plus one squared equals to 36. So here we have a nine, here we have a 36. Let's divide both, both sides by nine because nine fours are 36. If we divide both sides by nine, nine is going to drop out, 36 becomes four. And now, negative a plus one would equal square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2, which is plus or minus 2. Let's continue our journey here, which means that negative a plus 1, negative a plus 1 is either equal to negative 2 or negative a plus 1 is equal to positive 2, because the square root of 4 is both positive 2 and negative 2. If it is negative 2, then bring the a to this side and the 2 to this side and that will give us a equal to 3 which makes sense that negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 that's one possibility or bring bring the a to this side and 2 to this side in which case a would equal to negative 2 and the positive 1 would be negative 1 there you go obviously obviously we're not going to have two right answers there's only 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 one of these two is going to be in the answer choices and that is number was this number six negative one there you go the answer is C the answer is C because the problem does say if X is equal to negative three what is one possible value of a the one possible value of a is negative one and the other possible value of X a is positive three they will both do the job when a is equal to three when a is equal to three and x is equal to, oh, I forget what x was equal to, x was negative 3, let's not go through the whole thing, those are the two possibilities. I was about to verify everything but that would take too long and I also forgot what the values were. Number seven, we are given an, uh, a graph, a scatter plot, and obviously I'm not going to try to replicate the whole thing on the blackboard, that will take forever, but I'll give you the gist of it. So here's what it looks like. Here we are measuring the distance in astronomical units, and here we are measuring density in grams per centimeter cube. The units, units are of no relevance to us, you understand, because we are just looking at numbers. And this is what it looks like. Here we, it starts with 3, 4, 5, 6, there you go, 4, 5, 6. It begins with, and then each one of them is divided into four parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It begins with here. It begins at 5 and 5 and 5.75. I'm going to pick up speed here. I'm taking. I'm going at it. Another point that I found uh, that, that that you, if you look at the graph carefully, and you don't have to do any of this because you don't have to reproduce the graph. I have to do it because I'm trying to find where does it go through. 24. The line goes through 24 and three and a half. This is three. This is three and a half. 24, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and then 28, right there. So it looks something like this, something to that effect. Let's, let's, let's answer the question. The question simply is, according to, according to the scatter plot that, has, that is given to us, which of the following statement about the relationship between the distance and the density can be inferred. Well, what can be inferred is quite obvious here. They are negatively related. The closer the object is to the sun, the denser it is. The farther away it is from the sun, the lighter it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. 
and that is answer choice A. Closer, closer the object. Closer the object is to sun. The denser it is. And I'm going to go write the second half of the colorway, which is the farther it is, the farther it is from the sun, the lighter it is. And that is answer choice A. That is exactly what we find in A. It says the more distance the object is from the sun, the less dense it is. And that's exactly true. The closer it is, the more dense it is, the farther away it is, the less dense it is. And that is answer choice A. Let's look at number 8. In number 8, we are told that we have an object at 1.2 astronomical unit. The question is, what is the predicted what is the predicted density what is the predicted density of this object and it is for that reason it is for this problem question number eight that I took the time to draw this graph here because otherwise since I cannot put the book in front of you on the camera you can see here what it is so again it says 1.2 as you know if you have the book in front of you you will know that this is not 12 this is 1.2 this is 2.4 this is 2.8 and so on and so forth 1.2 is right here let's let's go Let's go straight down. And if I did it, if I did a decent job of plotting it, we should have we should not have too much trouble predicting what the density is going to be of the object, what range does it fall in. So let's let's go through, see what we do. Oh, there you go. It looks to me, it looks to me that it falls between four and a half and five. Between between four and a half and five. The density is going to be between four and a half and five. Let's look at the answer choice. You said me? The answer choices are 3.6, 4.1, 4.6, and 5.5. And since we're looking for something that falls between four and a half and six, this is four, four and a quarter, four and a half. This is a little bit above four and a half. This is four and a half, a little bit above four and a half. So four and a half and five. And the only thing that falls in that range is 4.6. And that is answer choice C. That is answer choice C. Let's look at it. Let's take, let's take a look at number 9. We are told that 9ax plus 9b minus 6 is equal to 21. And the question is, how much is AX plus B? Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's first bring the 6 to the other side, negative 6, let's bring it to the other side. So we get 9AX plus 9B is equal to 21 plus 6, which is going to give us 27. Now we can immediately see that they are all multiple of 9. Let's divide this entire equation by 9. If we divide the whole equation by 9, we're going to get AX plus plus b, we're dividing by 9, not 3, plus b, and 27 divided by 9 is going to give us 3. There you go. It equals 3. This guy equals 3. And there is answer choice A. Let's take a look at number, number 10. Number 10 says that Number 10 says that certain person works in an office for 8 hours a day and on average of that 8 hours that the person spends at work about 15% of that hour, 8 hours is spent in meetings. The question simply is how many minutes do I spend every day on average in meetings? Well, let's find out, shall we? We spend 15% of 8 hours in meetings. We know 10%. We know 10% we know of 8. It's just going to be 0 0.8. And if 10% is 0.8, then 5%, that implies that 5%, which is half of it, of 8, 
must be, if 10% is 0 0.8, 5% must be half of it, 0.4. In other words, 15% 15% of 8 is equal to 1.2 hour. Let's multiply. Let's multiply by 60 because we're not looking for how many hours, we're looking for how many minutes. And there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that's just 0. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 carry 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. There you go. And don't forget the decimal. It is 1.2. 1.2 here, so it becomes 72. So this translates into 72 minutes. On average, this particular person spends eight hours that he or she spends at the office. This person ends up spending 72 minutes on average in meetings every day. Number 11. Number 11. We are told that we have two kinds of things that are that we are shipping. The standard edition of some video game and a collect, collector's edition. We are told that the volume of a standard edition is 20 cubic inches. And the volume of the collector's edition is 30 cubic inches. We are told that we just received the order for 75 games. The total order was 75 game. We receive order for 75 game. They did not tell us how many of the standard edition, how many of the collector's edition, but 75 games is what we have to ship, which means that the standard edition plus collection edition must add up to 75. S S stands for S stands for the number of standard edition that we're going to ship, and C stands for collector's edition. And since they are looking, uh, since they are asking us to identify which of these uh, four scenarios is valid, if you look, we have done half the work. We have done half the work, so this will be a good place to pause and look at the, have a quick look at the answer choices. And if we do that, we immediately realize the answers are not going to be C or D. C or D tell us something else. It has to be either A or B. A, A or B are the only ones that tell us that 75 equals to S plus C. What, actually, what it actually tells us is that 75 minus S is equal to C, which is the same thing. Let's continue. We are further told that the total volume to be shipped is 1870 cubic inches. So that is our other, that is our other uh, equation. They're not inequality, I was wrong, they are both equations. That's another equation. Since total volume is 1870, and since we are shipping S number of standard games, and each of the each of them has volume of 20 cubic inches, 20 times S will represent the volume total volume of all the standard standard game that we are shipping, plus 30 times C. We are shipping C collector's editions game, and each one of them has a volume of 30 cubic inches. Therefore, 30 times C will represent the total volume of all the collector's edition that we are sending. And therefore, the sum of these two quantities has to equal 1870. And that will enable us to knock out one of these two answer choices. Either A is going to be gone or B is going to be gone. Let's see which one is going to be gone. B says 30 times S. No, it's not 30 times S, it's 20 times S. The answer is A. The answer is A. That was the last question on that page. We're going to stop right here. Tomorrow we're going to pick up our story from here. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.